the Opopco Studios in Oklahoma City. You're watching The Press Row. I'm Jenny Carlson here with Barry Trammell. Time for our inbox segment where we take your email questions and answer them here on video, Barry. Let's get right to it. Let's go to the inbox and this one from David. David says, even with the continued success of the Thunder and players backing Scott Brooks, would he be safe even if they fall short in the NBA Finals or even in the Conference Finals? Kind of reminds me of when the Bulls were coming up and Jerry Reinsdorf felt like they had peaked with Doug Collins at the helm and made the change to bring in Phil Jackson. What do you think about that, Barry? Well, I only have one thing to say. You got to be kidding me. I mean, <laughs> for crying out loud. Sometimes Scotty Brooks does things that drive me nuts, like won't play the small lineup or, you know, thinks uh, that Derek Fisher, 27 minutes a game, is the answer in the NBA Finals. But I don't know what you want out of a guy. I mean, the Thunder's gotten better and better every year. Uh, they uh, now have the, uh, you know, they go from uh, playoffs to the West Finals to the NBA Finals. Now they're in contention to go back again. Uh, the Thunder success story has not hit even so much as a speed bump, and we're talking about uh, firing the coach. It's just absurd. Uh, the truth of the matter is Phil Jackson's an excellent coach. Doug Collins was going to win an NBA championship or several if, uh, if he had got to stay on as the Bulls coach. Phil didn't win it his first year in Chicago. It took year two. Scottie Pippen turned 25 years old and the Bulls won. Uh, Doug Collins was going to win it. There's no reason to get in any kind of hurry. You know, you talk about no speed bumps, and I think it's really easy as this season has just clicked along and the Thunder's been towards the top of the Western Conference standings. You know, it's been, it's been almost an afterthought that right before the season, they traded their third best player, arguably their second best player some days, arguably their best player some days. James Harden is off this team, and yet every, every and there were so many people that said, the Thunder's going to fall apart. There's no way they can be nearly the contender they were before James Harden uh, left this team. There's just no way, no way, no way, and here they are. And I don't think you, uh, you can't ignore what the players have done, but you also can't ignore what the coaches have done, Barry. This has just continued on the trajectory regardless. To me, to even think about Scott Brooks leaving, it's ridiculous. All right, back to the inbox. This one from Bob. Bob says, if the Thunder reverts back to the stagnant half-court offense of their first three seasons in Oklahoma City, they lose. Kobe passed the ball in the last seven minutes of that game against the Thunder over the weekend. The new Lakers team ball, two wins in a row. Westbrook and Durant, hog ball, easy to defend. Well, he's got a point in that, at least that Lakers game. He does have a point, and the truth of the matter is, this has uh, started to become a recurring problem, and he's right. It was, it's a reminiscent of the previous year's when the Thunder offense did stagnate earlier in the year, it did not. Thunder moved the ball a lot more. Last few games, I've noticed the Thunder has gone into the one-on-one -on -one mode, especially down the stretch. It's not a good development. I like to see the Thunder continue to move the ball, the clear out, the run the clock down, let Durant and Westbrook go one-on-one. -on -one. I don't like that. Uh, maybe you can make a case for it. Uh, with, uh, with no, uh, on a last possession in a tie game or something when you're trying to, you know, make sure you get a last second shot. But uh, I'm, with, uh, I'm with the uh, reader here. Uh, too, much, uh, too much stagnation, too much one-on-one. Uh, uh, -on -one. I don't necessarily think it's hog ball. I think it's, it's not somebody hogging the ball. I think it's Scotty Brooks uh, directing this. So uh, let's move the ball, Thunder. Let's get Kevin Martin involved. Let's get Serge Ibaka involved. Let's, uh, let's continue to move the ball, and all of a sudden Durant and Westbrook both will get open for shots. Well, and that's, it's, it's really sort of, it's sort of a head-scratcher that they've gone this way because for so much of the early season, you saw not only Durant and Westbrook able to create shots, which we already know they can do, but creating for others. They were getting shots for other guys. They were being the playmakers, and they were filling that role that we saw James Harden fill a lot in late-game situations where he could get to the basket or create his shot but also kick to other guys and, and get them shots and that included Durant and Westbrook and what Durant and Westbrook had started to fill that role but we haven't seen that as much and to me they've got just as many inviting options out there as they've ever had with Kevin Martin and his ability to to shoot from outside with uh, Serge Ibaka and his evolving game I, I don't get it I don't know what's happened I don't know if there's been a, uh, a you know a directive change or if you know I, I don't know but it is really odd that they had such good flow and all of a sudden we've sort of seen it change maybe it'll change back now that they're off the road but clearly not a good development for this team back to the inbox and a question from Bill Bill says the Big 12 should consider inviting Cincinnati and Connecticut the league needs a team in the New York area for recruiting purposes. 
It would give West Virginia a couple of closer teams. The basketball tournament could be held in Madison Square Garden with UConn as the host school. Wow, Bill's got it all figured out got here, Barry. Got it all Barry. figured out. Uh, no chance, not going to happen. Uh, Big 12's waiting on Florida State and Clemson to come free if, if that occurs. Otherwise, they don't want UConn and Cincinnati. Nothing against those schools. Uh, but uh, they don't need the New York recruiting ground. Now, I think... Maybe for basketball. Well, maybe for... Yeah, they, yeah there you go. Okay. Yeah, not a lot of uh, linebackers coming out of uh, Staten <laughs> Island. But, um, but uh, with, when it comes to, uh, to basketball, the, the conference tournament isn't going to be played in New York. The, uh, you know, the uh, St. John and Seton Hall and Villanova League, whatever, if it gets to be called the Big East, it'll stay at, uh, at uh, Madison Square Garden. But uh, no, the Big 12's content to stay at 10, waiting on Florida State and Clemson, not Connecticut and Cincinnati. Sounds like in a lot of ways Bill's thinking of this in terms of basketball. And there's, that's, I mean, it's okay. Uh, there's definitely people that, that trend towards college basketball, but, but when it comes to realignment, it's all about football. And that's why a Florida State, a Clemson, schools that are definitely football schools, and that's the priority. That's where you see a conference looking to maybe expand. And uh, the Big 12 obviously happy right now, but there's some talk that, you know, maybe we are again heading towards these major, big-time 16, 20-team conferences. Sounds like the Big 12 is at least looking at it. They're not, they don't have their heads in the sand. Right. This. Yeah, I like, I like where the Big 12 is preparation-wise. Bob Bowles will be providing great leadership. All right, back to the inbox one last time, and this one comes from Terry. Terry says, the Senior Bowl continues to carry on the charade of North versus South, with the teams divided in an illogical manner that no one could figure out. For example, players from OU and OSU on opposite teams. How about something like this to generate more fan interest? Players from the Big 12, Big 10, and Pac-12 against players from the SEC, ACC, Big East, and Notre Dame, I got to tell you, Terry's given a lot of thought to the Senior Bowl, Barry. <laughs> I like it. I think it's a great idea because let's, he's, he's right and you're right in your inference, which is who cares about the Senior Bowl? Well, nobody, but this might make us care. I might watch if I knew all the Big 12 guys on one team playing against all the SEC guys on another. That would make me watch. I would, I would be interested in that. But if, uh, if I don't know that Seth Dagey from – from Texas Tech is going to be on the same team with Lane Johnson from Oklahoma. If I got a, I, I can't get my arms around just a haphazard roster. So I'm all for it. I think it's great. I like people who think in terms of marketing new ways. I like the idea. Well, you know what else? I mean, I watch the Senior Bowl very limited, but I tell you, it is confusing not only because you've got guys all all mixed around when north south doesn't really matter, but they're wearing other guys' helmet decals. So even though you might think you spot somebody no, that from, should be against the rules. You, you spot somebody from a certain team and you think, okay, I see who I think that is. All of a sudden you realize, oh no, that's somebody else wearing the other so decal. So like a BYU, uh, some, some, uh, some OU guy gets a BYU decal yeah. and puts it on his red helmet. Yeah. Well, that's bogus. They don't all do it, but they do some of them and it is confusing. So and these guys are seniors. <laughs> They're not freshmen goofballs just out of high school. They're seniors. They ought to know better. Go put the decal on your yeah. bedroom window yeah, or something yeah, yeah, like yeah. that where it doesn't make me nearly as confused. Hey, be sure to stay with the best coverage team anywhere at newsok.com and every day in the Oklahoman.